Hi everybody, I'm Dan. And I'm Nicole. Welcome to Model Railroading for Beginners. Hello, welcome. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about gauge. Yes, very important, because I always get those two things um, confused. Two, what two things? You know, um, gauge and... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Aw. Um, scale, gauge scale. and scale. You know the last video that we did? Right. The last video that we did was on scales, which I would recommend if you haven't watched it uh, to maybe ref go back to that and refer to it. And I'll put yes. a link in the description. Um, but yeah, so the difference is um, mainly that gauge is the distance between the rails. Okay, from, right. from the in inside of one rail to the inside of the opposite rail. So on this, right, on this little piece of track. Between these two things. Correct. So that's that's what gauge is. And <laughs> sorry, I couldn't resist. Little Vanna White, you know that I'm an eighties, <laughs> nineties girl now, right? <laughs> so little Vanna White action little, for you. Little Vanna White, yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so yes, between these two. Right. Yes. And it's also um, associated with that as the wheel gauge because they have to match. Okay. Okay. Um, the, the wheels have to match the rails, otherwise the train wouldn't work. And that would be the size of these parts, right? That's yeah, there's the wheels, the wheels right on top of the rails, you know, so okay. they have to be the same distance apart as the rails. Okay. Um, so yeah, just briefly, the way that train wheels work is they, they're basically made of metal and they have um, what's called a flange, which is like a, a wider spot or a little, you know, like a groove. ring, yeah, around the inside edge. And each wheel, you know, they're always paired because there's two rails, so there's two wheels. And the flanges are on the inside, and what that does is it locks the wheels to the rails so they oh. can't come off. That's how trains work. If you didn't have flanged wheels, you wouldn't have a railroad. So that's, it's really important that they match because if they didn't, then the train wouldn't stay on the track. Right. Okay. Okay. So the um, just to recap briefly, scale is the proportion of a model to the real world object that it represents. So like an HO scale uh, car, this is 187th scale, so you would need 87 of these end to end to equal the length of the real car. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's just a it's just a size ratio and scale applies to um, all different kinds of models, not just trains, uh, airplanes, cars, uh, structures, anything. Yeah, which you could refer back to the scale video for all that information. Right, and the reason I'm mentioning it is because people often get scaging, um, <laughs> scale and <laughs> gauge confused. Together. Yeah, that's that bad. very cute. <laughs> um, people often get scale and gauge confused. Um, and sometimes, I know I do. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes even manufacturers will use the terms kind of interchangeably. And I, I cringe just a little when I see that because it's, it's really not the same thing. Um, and, and that's the, not great for new beginners either because that's probably a little confusing. Right, it is. And the, the reason why I make a distinction is because in the real world there are different track gauges. Right, and so okay. let's talk about that. Right, so... Most of the track in North America, Europe, Great Britain, and other places is what we call standard gauge. Standard gauge. Yeah, and standard Which gauge. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So normally, when you just say, I want an HO scale train or an N scale train, you're going to get standard gauge. Okay. Standard gauge in the real world is four feet eight and a half inches between the rails or 1.435 meters in metric. Okay. okay? Um, so that's what most of the trains you see normally are going to be uh, built to. But there are also other gauges. So anything that's narrower than a standard gauge is a narrow gauge. Anything. Any, yeah, anything less than four feet, eight so and a half inches. So one inch less, half an inch less, narrow gauge. It's a narrow gauge. Okay. Yeah. Anything bigger than that is a broad gauge. Broad gauge. Okay. okay. And there are narrow and broad gauges used um, still in other parts of the world. Now, is that mostly when they take the trains, like tra like stuff off of trains to go to like, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say, like industrial areas, you know, where they're shipping to people and maybe those are like, you know, or like, is that wood logging stuff that's more narrow scale? Like, um, like where do, where do people use that more? It, it varies. There are some countries that 
uh, use different uh, narrow gauges. Uh, like, oh, like the whole country? Yeah, I'm pretty sure like in Japan, um, I would have to check this to be, to be sure, but I think Japan uses like a three and a half foot gauge or whatever the equivalent is in metric okay. for, for their trains. Um, um, and other, there are some countries that use, uh, you know, different, different gauges. There's meter gauge, which is a narrow gauge that's uh, used in some places in Europe and other places. Um, okay. There's also, I think some countries use a broad gauge. I think there's some of that in India and oh. maybe in Russia, at least there used to be. Um, not super expert on stuff outside of North America. So, um, you know, oh, if, yeah. if anybody has better information on that, you know, please leave a comment. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so don't, don't quote me on that, but, but there, are, there are different gauges though in different areas. Okay. Um, also um, in the past, uh, narrow gauges were often used in areas where they wanted to um, build a little cheap, more cheaply because mm. narrow gauge, like a typical in North America was like three feet between the rails was a very common narrow gauge, probably the most common one. And, you know, you could build a narrow gauge line for less money because you didn't need to excavate as much width right. to get a train through a different space. Um, you could use a little sharper curves. Uh, so, that, I mean, there was there was advantages to it. The, the disadvantage to it is that they couldn't really interchange freight cars with other railroads that were using standard gauge. So a lot of the narrow gauges that survived ended up being regauged to standard. I know that happened with the South Pacific Coast, which used to run from Alameda down to Santa Cruz oh, okay. over the hill. Um, it was standard gauged at one point and then of course eventually abandoned um, but part of that is is actually the beach train line at roaring camp <clears throat> oh well that's cool so uh there there are remnants of it but the uh i do like that train yeah yeah that is so cool. um yeah it is a cool train <laughs> so yeah um anyway but yeah there, there were different reasons for using narrow gauge but it's 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 important to know the the main thing about it is that there are more than one, there is more than one gauge in the real world. And um, we should actually, since we mentioned Roaring Camp, we actually did a clip there a couple of years oh, ago. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah, so let's take a look at that and I'll, it'll show you a couple of different track gauges in close proximity. Yeah, okay, cool, let's take a look at that. So I'm standing here next to some narrow gauge track, and as you can see, this is pretty closely spaced. This happens to be three foot gauge over here. This is some standard gauge track. As you can see, it's a little wider. And this is four feet, eight and a half inches between the rails. That was so much fun, right? Yeah, that was. Yeah. Yeah, we like Roaring Camp. We actually got married there. Yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> I told Daniel as long as I could do all the costuming, yes, I said costuming, then um, he could pick the place. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm a smart girl and I knew where he was going to pick and I was fine with it already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So that was a fun day. That was so fun. Um, so one other local example of a broad gauge is the Bay Area's BART system. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. uses a five foot six inch track gauge. Okay. So um, in the modeling scales, um, there's actually special uh, naming conventions for narrow gauge uh, scale and gauge combinations. So um, one of them is uh, NN3, which is N scale. The way that's written is a big, big N, capital N for N scale, a small N for narrow gauge, and then three for three feet between the rails. Oh, okay. So depending upon any narrow gauge, whatever the feet were, would that be the last number? Yeah, the number can change depending on what the gauge is. Um, like if it was a 30 inch gauge, usually like a 30 inch gauge, people tend to write like, it would be like NN30. Um, usually if it's a bigger number like that, it means inches, not feet. Okay. Um, there wouldn't be a 30 foot gauge. <laughs> that would be way too big. Um, 
but it would also not be narrow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, there's some people like I know uh, there's also HO in three, which is HO scale, uh, three foot gauge. Um, uh, I know some people are, have HON 30 because you know, some of them, there's, there's a group of people that are like no two and a half and they show like a little picture of half a fish. And, <laughs> <laughs> half a fish? That's yeah, funny. I don't know. It bothers some people, I guess, if you say HON two and a half versus, versus like uh, HON 30. Okay. But, but yeah, there can be different, um, there can be different numbers depending on the, the gauge. So the, the number would specify what the gauge was. Um, in fact, like I have a couple pieces of whoa, oh. little little cars rolling. Just there. Let me hang on to this guy over here. Um, these two pieces of track right here are both HO scale. All right. Um, but as you can one see, one is much smaller than the other. Right. One is much smaller than the other. This is HO in three track, which represents three foot narrow gauge, and this one represents standard gauge. The important thing about the you know narrow gauge is that it's still HO scale. So all of your vehicles and buildings and little people and all that stuff would still be the same size. Right. They're not different scales. And like you have, here's a couple of refrigerated box cars. Um, the smaller one's a narrow gauge car, the bigger one's a standard gauge car. And these are actually correct in relative proportion to each other. They're both HO scale. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's just that the narrow gauge equipment tends to be smaller. So it has to be smaller in model form too. It's just like if you parked a, a you know, Mini Cooper next to a Chevy Tahoe, you know, right. um, one is a much b bigger vehicle, yes. but they're, they're not made to different scales. So um, just, just wanted to make that, that point. And this layout behind us, our end scale Siren Creek is actually a dual gauge. Yes. So there are actually um, places where they will have multiple gauges um, in the same piece of track. <laughs> and this one has a lot of different, like three different um, lines of metal that are fused on there in different places and that's where it's the multiple gauges, right? Right. Uh, typically with dual gauge, <clears throat> there will be a three rail track and the, the narrow gauge and standard gauge equipment will share one of the rails and then right. the other rail is just for one or the other. So okay. usually the, the, the rail will be offset slightly. It won't be like perfectly even like Lionel track is when you see that. Um, it'll be one, one pair of, it'll look like a, you know, one rail and then there'll be two rails that are kind of spaced closer together on, on one side. Okay. Um, but yeah, du dual gauge is a real thing. In fact, I think in the real world, there's even some places with triple gauge and uh, I don't even want to think about trying to build a turnout. Uh, <laughs> that, this was hard enough. <laughs> To do. I'm trying to see that in my head and I, you know, yeah. maybe because I'm just barely grasping the it's, devil, like I'll just wait for a while yeah. and maybe the triple will sink in too. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not real common. Um, the reason why they would use a dual gauge is to allow the two different um, gauges of trains to use the same right of way in certain right. locations. But it's not a super common thing, but it does exist. It does, yeah. Yeah. And it exists on our table over there. Of right. which we'll definitely show a picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, the part where I think people sometimes get confused with the different gauges is because some of the gauges, track gauges, are used in multiple scales. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would say that that's where I get a little like, why are it's the same? Th I can't. I can't even like <laughs> get it out like how I feel about it because it's all like, why isn't it just called the same thing? Yeah, well, it has to do with what it what it's meant to represent. Um, for example, NN three is the same track gauge as Z scale. So um, how that came about was I think Marklin put out or Marklin came out with Z scale sometime in the early seventies. I I think if I'm but anyway around there, um, which Z is one two twentieth scale, so it's smaller than N. Right. Okay. So, but still uses the same track. As okay, let me, as as not the same track as regular N scale. The same, okay. The track is N and three. Right. The narrow then, gauge scale. Right. So okay. I think how it came about is, um, after Z scale came out and they were selling models, somebody took an N scale ruler and measured the Z scale track and say, hey, that works out to about three feet in N scale. 
And, you know, you have to understand that most of the narrow gauge scales are more of a niche scale than the, the regular. You know, if you go into a hobby shop and you just want to ask for HO scale trains, you're going to get standard gauge. If you ask for N, N scale trains, you're going to get standard gauge. Those are the most common ones. Um, you know, if you want to model narrow gauge, you're, you're going into a, a, a much smaller area oh, of interest. Okay. okay. A niche. Okay. A niche. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Right. It's like there's not as many people doing that. And a lot of these things kind of came about organically because somebody wanted to model narrow gauge and end scale. And they're like, well, how do I do that? If you don't, if you didn't have um, anything to base it on, you'd have to sit there and try to make little train mechanisms and stuff, which is really difficult. I mean, I do a lot of crazy stuff, but even I don't want to attempt something like that because it's like, You'd need not only we found do, the line. Wait, yeah. we found well, the yeah, line. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not only do you, would you have to have like watchmaker skills to be able to deal with all that, but you'd also have to have those tools and like a little mini machine shop to be able to very precisely create frames and put all the gears in the right places so that they all mesh and work. And you know, it's a lot of a lot of engineering and and, and building that would go into something like that. That's super tiny. Right. So. Um, you know, somebody figured out that you could take Z-scale track and you could take Z-scale, like a steam locomotive chassis, which is already built. You could take the body, get rid of that, put a new body on it that represents an N-scale narrow gauge locomotive, which is exactly what I'm doing with my little NN3 steam engine build for this layout. And you would have a pretty credible representation of a narrow gauge locomotive. So... Okay. Um, a lot of this stuff, like NN3, uh, you know, it's kind of started as a, a just a bunch of people doing it, and then the commercial stuff came later. Because it's like there was little little cottage industries of people selling, you know, boxcar kits and stuff, and then later on, like microtrains came along and bought some of the molds and, and you know released their line of NN3 rolling stock, which is based on some of those. But I mean, it's it's like it it started as kind of modelers just doing something kind of ingenious to try to make something that didn't exist. And then, you know, later on, uh, you know, commercial stuff followed. But there's still, I mean, NN3 is a pretty niche uh, market. <laughs> you know, there's not a lot of people doing that. Um, and the same things like um, if you take N scale track and measure it with an HO scale ruler, you end up with about 30 inches. So some people will take um, N-scale mechanisms and wheels and things and, and the same track gauge and use it to model uh, HO-scale 30-inch gauge, which sometimes is a stand-in either for, for three-foot gauge or for um, even two-foot gauge because it's only like half a foot off from either oh, okay. of those. Um, and then like, for example, the, there used to be uh, some two-foot gauge railroads uh, up in Maine. Oh. And... You know, that's, it's like that was something that was a very regional thing that didn't exist in a lot of other places. So trying to find companies that are willing to, like, produce product lines based on that, you know, good luck. Right. <laughs> you know, but people can take, like, a little, <clears throat> in, same thing I'm doing in, in, with the NN3 engine. You could take an N-scale, you know, mechanism, build a superstructure on it to represent one of those two foot gauge trains and if you can live with the fact that it's really half half a foot wider than it should be the, the track gauge then you know it works and there's been people that have done that so a lot of these things came about kind of organically like that and it's just like um, there's one called on 30 which is ho scale or ho gauge i guess i should say track used in o scale for o, uh, narrow gauge and oh, okay. that kind of started the same way um and now Bachman actually has a whole line of like uh, ON30 stuff. Hmm. So, um, you know, like the little shades they have at Roaring Camp and stuff like that. Right. You can get those and it's, it's narrow gauge. It's not exactly what you used to see because 30 inch gauge was a little rare in the real world. But um, still, you know, if you can live with half a foot of, you know, difference, which really isn't that noticeable. You know, you can at have that size, probably at that not size. That, that noticeable. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of yeah. how <clears throat> some of that stuff evolved. Okay. And that's that's why that you see um, sometimes track gauges being used in multiple scales. 
Okay. Well, let's take a look at our Siren Creek because that shows two scales. Right. That shows N, N and NN3 happily yeah. coexisting. Happily coexisting. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look. I guess the one last thing that I'll talk about with Gage is large scale. Um, if, if you watched the scale program, um, you may have seen the little captions. I put little captions every time we talked about a scale and I would I'd say like N scale means 1160 or HO means 187. And when it got to large scale, I put it's, it's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> um, the reason for that is because most outdoor uh, most large scales intended for outdoors. Um, there are some people who do it in, indoors, but you need a pretty large space for that. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, most large scale for outside uses a 45 millimeter track gauge, which is what this is. Okay. Um, different manufacturers have decided to m make this represent different things. Oh. Okay, so if it represents standard gauge, then it works out to about 1 32nd scale, which is, I think, what this box car is. Um, this is a standard gauge box car. And then there was one other company, I forget if it was USA Trains or one of those. Anyway, they decided that, I guess, that 1 32nd scale wasn't impressive enough, so they bumped it up to 1 29th, but still kept the same track gauge. Um, then there are also trains that are meant to represent using the same track narrow gauge. So they're built to different scales and there's been, uh, I guess depending on the, whether it's supposed to be European or, or North American or what, there's like 124th, 1, 1 to 22.5 and 1 to 20.3. That's more numbers than we need to talk about. <laughs> anyway, um, like oh if, you, if you say that this equals three feet, then it works out to 1 to 20.3, which is what this car is. And what um, most of the equipment that I have is uh, after I figured out that for myself. Because so, <laughs> the reason um, why is it actually looks a little, uh, it doesn't sound like a big difference, but it actually looks a little weird if you run the 1 to 20.3 cars with a 1 24th scale car. Um, there's enough of a size difference that it looks a little odd. So, okay. but um, yeah, so the, how would people look for that to know? You really got to do your homework with, with the large scale because okay. um, uh, it's really now there are, of course, there are a segment of people, too, that do large scale more casually and they don't really care. So they just buy stuff they like that runs on the track. So, okay. you know, that's that's one way to deal with it. Um, another way is to just, yeah, like, you know, do your homework and make sure that you get all of the same kind yeah yeah okay. which is what i've been trying to do um when we eventually get the outdoor layout set up it's it's going to be 120th scale so i'm getting all this type type of box car but um so it, it gets a little confusing because you know you can see these these two cars are almost the same size but in the real world this one would be a lot bigger because it's a standard gauge car and that's a narrow gauge car so they're not built to the same scale but they run on the same track and that's just to make people confused, I think, is why they really did that. Yeah, that's really, that's really, oh, it's like use math for this one, but then throw it out the window for this one. Thanks so much. Yeah. <laughs> my goodness. They so. have me whipping my hair like, <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. So, um, but anyway. Just to, you know, gauges the distance between the rails, and that's why it, you know, and because there are multiple gauges, that's why it doesn't mean the exact same thing as, as scale. Even yes. though you will see that word used a lot, you'll see people talk about HO gauge trains or N gauge trains, and what they really mean is standard gauge, usually the regular, you know, HO scale or N scale stuff. But, um, you know, even, even if you see that term used, it's, I think it's just important to understand the difference.
that's good. Yeah. That's good. So hopefully I didn't confuse anyone or we didn't confuse anyone. Oh, and I'm sure we did. So drop your questions <laughs> below, guys. Yeah. I might write a few questions myself. <laughs> We can have our own questions on our, our Ask Dan and Nicole show. <laughs> like, oh, this one was put in by, oh, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a few questions. <laughs> well, like, I feel like I might need an aspirin now. It's a lot of numbers. There's a lot of numbers in there. Guys, if you're like me and you're like, eh, maybe I'll just take this video like five minutes at a time. Because <laughs> dang. People make things so much dif difficult than what they need to be, honestly. Like, but you know, that's that's people. And yeah. now there's all this stuff out there anyway, so you have to be careful. So it's good to know. Yeah. I think it's a good video. Yeah. Okay. It's good. So if yeah. you guys do have questions, make sure you drop it below. You know, either for Ask Dan and Nicole or about this particular video, of course, too. Yeah, and if you have yeah. suggestions for future shows that would be good <clears throat> beginner topics, uh, let us know that too. Yeah, yeah. Um, Always input is good. Mm -hmm. We value your guys' input. Yeah, yeah. and we've, we've had a few suggestions so far, so I appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. Um, keep them coming. Also, if you like the video, please, uh, you know, like it in the, down below. Um, comment, um, subscribe to the channel. All that stuff helps us. Yeah, so, hit that bell. Yeah. Good job. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I think that'll do it for this episode, and we hope you liked it. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys.